We're gonna try the engine after we think we've repaired it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Strange. It's a little bit frayed, but we've done the best quality. Shouldn't be enough to make it smoke though, should it? Is it coming off the connection? Well, I touched this part and burnt my fingers through the through, through, through the sheet. Yeah. So okay, Hang on! He's flipped! He's flipped! Get the sheath off and have a look at it. Yeah. Depending on the quality of the ratchet. If you're just going to use the ratchet straight away, you can break the mechanism and that's that fucked. And this is the Mel that doesn't need any work. Ah. Well, technically, the work's just been finished. So. Okay, so the engine's not starting, but we have had problems with starting her with the transmission before, so we thought it might be the pistons, water in the pistons, but we think now it's actually that the transmission dry. is dry. So we had so many problems with this before, she sucks up a lot. So um, before we would be going and we would top her up and we'd be going from seven knots to five to three to two, and that was a sign that she was empty, so I'm just thinking if we can top her up, get her running, stop, get her running again, so get the entire thing lubricated. And if Elizabeth is right, <laughs> I want a steak dinner. Well but done. But hopefully, well done. I'm going to be so happy for the night. <laughs> if we're not, then. Cool. All right, let's get some food tomorrow. Fill her up. Yeah. Um. Well, it is um, officially dark. Oh, darkish. I'd say it's night time right now and uh, just finished it, putting the two pulleys in and hopefully we can get the mainsail and the headsail up on this I just need to come back up put in a line for the topping lift and spinnaker headed and I think then we should be all right just uh, having a bit of mate do and if you can see it right there I've just put in this pulley here and that one there which we just need to run a new line for we need to get a new um, halyard for the headsail and we should be good to go on the uh, main mast. So um, when you started this morning what was it what was the um, problem that you were trying to tackle? Well we had this idea that there were water in the cylinders yeah um, so we bent down or adjusted down all the valves and try to turn it with no luck. Okay, so, so what you're taking the injectors off, trying to relieve the pressure? Uh, yeah, we and, don't uh, have to. Poten gotta... Potentially get if the water out of the cylinders if there is any in there. Well, stuff you don't want in your air intake. Let's have a look. Examples of whatever this is. Oh yeah, yeah. Rag, uh, uh, blue. Is that the air filter? <laughs> I think I have no idea. Might have been at some point. No, it's just no, a rag. No, no, it's just a rag. It's like a J-cloth. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. Just, I mean, it must have been having asthma attacks this engine. Yeah. Right. Anything else? I think we found the problem. We take the plate off the air intake and try and turn the engine and we get this. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> 
might be it. <laughs> <laughs> So I am uh, currently the highest Regino crew member on Martinique. I've come up the main mast to replace this pulley which I've come up on which is being held on by this rope at the top of this rail and I've got to replace a pulley into here. Um, I just had to tie the bowline around myself and up into the mast and have a foot loop so I can lift myself up because that was the only thing holding me to the mast and uh, this is currently the view I have Bit nervous about dropping my phone. Um, currently at the top of the mast, changing this pulley, which is being held on by this rope. And I had, well, I climbed the mast on my own using my old tree surgery, uh, tree climbing methods. Got a crusset on the halyard here, or a rope, and just come up on the bosun's chair. And currently the highest. Well, going on to uh, complete the stanchion. Oosh. Excellent work. And I'm dripping on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a beautiful moment, and then the end. <laughs>
How is it that windy and this hot? Bloody Caribbean. As well. It's weird me being on camera, I'm usually behind filming. Mm. It's my favourite place, behind the camera. Yeah. Oh, that is an English pound. It might work, it's the same shape as the neck. Let's try. <gasps> Whee! Whee! English pounds work in Europe. Thank you. Britannia. Alright, let's get our shuffle on. Can you fast forward? <laughs> We've gone in the exit. Huh? We've gone in the exit. Yes, we have. <laughs> it's this way. Okay, what I might do, I might get this goat's cheese because you get oh, 200 yeah. grams. And this is only 180. Oh, yeah. So you get more. In this one. And do you want blue? Well, actually, no, white onions are cheaper. Yeah, that's a good idea. Two or three. Go on, push the boat out. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. I think we've gone over budget, definitely. I think this is probably about 80 euros. But for five people, we've had to take into consideration, especially three blokes yeah. working, eating a lot. And also, I want to point out that, you know, um, we don't have gas at the moment. It's going to take time for us to get gas um, and the pipe fix and everything. So I don't want to spend a load of money to get the stuff that we can only cook because, you know, we won't eat that food for four days. And we need food now. So we've got everything that we can kind of eat raw. Fresh. And also taking, um, you know, Mike's vegan. So we want to make sure that he can happily eat as well. Probably shouldn't have filmed this when there's just bottles of alcohol around you. <laughs> we've been really sensible with our offending. Well, we've got the boys a treat of beer. They deserve a nice cold beer. And um, our yawn man is very fond of what he calls a Norwegian breakfast, which is a dash of rum with some orange juice. So we're gonna treat him to a little bottle of rum. So thank you for his hard work. Yeah. We'll have a little bit as well. Sure. So the rum is quite well priced. Oh my god, the rum is really well priced. Look at these prices. Four sixty-five for a bottle of Saint Etienne rum. I've never come across rum that cheap. But you can get boxes of it. Oh, this is all rum. This is all this rum. This is all rum. Welcome to the Caribbean. Also, a Saint James for six nineteen. Wow. When the sun comes up, pop, see, pop, pop, pop. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. No, Liz, no, no. The song I was thinking of was about the sheep. It was ba. No, ba. Jolly, no, Jolly. Just concentrate on that little star up there, all alone, surrounded by all of that. Black! <laughs> Black! No, Jolly. Black! <laughs> Black. Where shall we sleep tonight, Father? In Mother's grave? They're here! They're here! They've landed on the pier! In the dark chasm! The chasm of clouds! Like the endless blackness of space that leads to the chasm of clams! My eyes! My eyes are pies! And yours are lies! Just explain the master plan. Okay, so the situation is, is that um, we're surprising Jorn with his best friend flying from Norway to see him. Hey. 
Um, you guys don't know me, but uh, I like to introduce myself as Jan's best friend. Jan has one problem is in his life. And you know what it is? He's just too kind. You're gonna have a blast having this having this guy aboard on your boats. She's arriving tomorrow night, but we have told we have told Jan that Tommy's friend Aiden is coming, so it's a surprise for Tommy because we want to all go to the airport. But then we've also told Jan that Tommy is coming to the airport because he thinks Lorianne's friend is coming. So we now have to come up with a triple bluff of, yeah, but why would Lorianne be in the okay to be in the taxi? So we're now going to have another lie of saying, yeah, but Lorianne, I don't know. We're trying to figure it out. I don't know. So I'm just going to say, like, I'm coming along to the airport because I think... Tommy's we've lied to you. We've told Tommy that we've lied to you. Yeah, and we think my friend Robin is coming. But and it's Tommy's a risky lie, but it's a good lie. But when I said to your... We've lied to Tommy, we need to come up with an excuse. And he said, well, you, you can pretend that my friend Annalise is coming. And I was like, yes, we could say that lie. Okay, so to summarize, Jorn thinks that Tommy's friend is coming as a surprise, but the bluff is, oh, I've lost it. It's my friend is coming as a surprise. I've lost it. Blah 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 blah